Hi, this video is the first video in a series on how to self-install your cable. I have Comcast cable here, which works quite well, but this video is applicable to any cable provider because the first part you have to worry about is how to get the cable connected. There is an entertainment center in the bedroom usually, and this is in a master bedroom closet. So what you want to do first of all is make sure that this is all connected. Usually when people move out of a house, this all gets disconnected and filed up. So this box basically is the cable and phone systems coming in from the outside of the house into the house. And what you want to do is connect all this up. So this is not all that hard. You want to find first of all a cable which is coming from the outside, which has your cable connection from the cable provider, be it Comcast or Charter or Time Warner or whoever it is. So usually on these combiners this device is capable of splitting the cable out. This one will split it out in two, one, two, three, four, four ways. One of these is always an input port, so you're putting the cable into this and then it goes out. So Sometimes, when you have cable from the street and the signal is weak, you want to put in an amplifier. So basically the way I set this up is this amplifier is always running. And you'll see that in this situation, this wire here is from the street. This is the cable coming in. This little device here is capable of making the cable not have back feed from your neighbors. Sometimes you'll find when your signal goes out, your signal is either too weak or the neighbor's equipment is malfunctioning. So when you bring the cable into the house, you want to put this filter in that allows two-way communication with the cable, but it does not allow any kind of spurious signals to come in and interfere with your equipment. So it's more or less protection from the neighbor's equipment malfunctioning. So this amplifier here has an input and as you can see it has a number of outputs. So you put the cable on the input of this amplifier, it'll be marked in, and then you will have the out going to all of your rooms. So the way I did it was, since this amplifier provides a boost, any connection I cared about, and that's the Comcast internet modem uh, and the main TV went off the amplifier here. So there were two rooms that I am running off the amp. The other thing is, usually you don't have an amplifier. This is a very extreme luxury. Usually you simply have a splitter like this. These splitters have to handle certain frequencies that your cable provider uses and usually the splitter that comes with the house that the builder put in is generic and it won't handle the Comcast cable. So you want to get a really good splitter in here. If you look at this one closely, you can read the um, megahertz going through this thing. And what you're seeing is you're getting the in here and this in's coming from my amplifier actually. And then when you have an out, you're losing 7 dB on each port. So what that means is if you split your cable too many times it might not have enough strength because when you split the cable the signal is reduced on each of the output ports and the larger the splitter, like if this was a, an 8-way splitter, you might lose even more than 7 dB. You might lose 10 dB or something. So you don't really want to use an extreme splitter if you don't have to with many ports. Use the smallest splitter you need. So here's a splitter that is just laying around here. This is only a two-way splitter here. So you put the cable in and the cable goes out two ports. Notice that on this one you're only losing three and a half dB. So the signal would be stronger split two ways than it is split four ways. So that is something to keep in mind. You want to keep your cable signal as strong as possible on the wall jack by your TV. So this amplifier here plugs into AC. These little entertainment centers always have an AC jack. 
AC plug. And that's probably about it. So these cables on mine are labeled master bedroom, um, family room, things like that. Sometimes these are labeled, sometimes not. What I did in this case was I knew what cables went to my rooms because they were labeled and I put those in the amplifier. The rest of the house, I figured if I was going to move a TV around or something or some visitor comes and you got to move a TV around, I put in this four-way splitter so that basically every wire that's coming from all the outlets, all the cable outlets in the house, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven outlets, those are all getting fed. So any outlet in this house is going to work. That may or may not work in your case. Uh, if your cable signal is strong, you can just split it four ways with this splitter. You won't need an amplifier. I had this amplifier from a house that I was in a while back that had a really bad signal. And this amplifier was um, was given to me by the cable company to uh, to help out. And I simply just took it with me because it, it was kind of a gratis gift from them. So. I have it running here. I may not even need it, but I have not had any trouble with my cable using this amplifier. So anyway, to recap, if you can get a hold of the amplifier from your cable company, they will give these to you sometimes if your cable signal is really bad. Usually a technician has to come out and they say, oh yeah, they'll measure the uh, incoming cable here and they'll say, oh yeah, signal's too low, you need an amplifier. I was doing some Googling and found that these little Filters are good in case your cable's getting fouled up from your neighbors. I've, I've put this on. I was using Time Warner in San Diego, and I had to put on the amp down there and all this stuff. But up here in the Bay Area, Comcast is in pretty good. I simply put this stuff in here, but may not need it. But since this is all working, I figure it doesn't matter. This amplifier probably takes about 10 or 20 watts. It's, it's somewhat warm to the touch, so you're going to lose some electricity by... Uh, by running this thing, which might not be the greatest idea. So to recap, you can connect all of your cables through a splitter. This is a four-way splitter. It has an in and an out. This one loses 7 dB per connection. You want to use a small a splitter as possible. So if you only had two rooms you're using, use the two-way splitter. But if you can get away with um, using a larger splitter, you can try it and try and connect all your cables. These amplifiers can probably be bought at Fry's. They can be bought online. Your cable provider has them. You may not need an amplifier. This is pretty extreme, and it does use electricity. So that's how to do it from the bedroom side here, where you have your uh, cable coming into the house, usually in the newer house in the master bedroom. And you just take off this white cover to access this box and put the cover on. So what else is in here? Our, our phone lines coming into the house. These lines here could also be used as, as internet lines. If you had, say, an internet modem up here, which you probably could shove in here, and then you had, say, a, um, a little switch up here, and then you could feed all these lines, you could do it. But this is basically a punch block, so you gotta punch these wires on here down. You'd punch ethernet connectors on here and then plug it all in. This does not apply to your cable. I'm just basically showing you what else could be in your in your home box. So thanks again for watching this video. Good luck with connecting your cable. This is the first step. You have to get in here and deal with this. You, before you try anything on your self-install, you have to find this box. It could be anywhere. It could be in your living room. It could be in a closet. They're usually in closets. In an apartment, it might be in a closet, but in a house, it's usually in the master bedroom. So you got to find this box. You got to deal with it. You got to figure out which cable's coming in. In my case, the cable coming in from the outside is white. So here's another way to tell what's coming in from the outside. The outside cable is different. It is a more heavy duty cable. The cable is stiffer to bend, so and it plus this one has a lot of writing on it. You can see all the writing because it's certified to be of a certain quality. The interior cables are not of such quality. 
these interior cables don't have the same writing on it. So, as you can see, the cable coming from the outside is uh, quite robust. Well, actually, it looks like there's two of them, so maybe my information wasn't uh, that accurate, but you can usually tell the cable from the outside. It might be a different color. In my case, it's not. Um, one way to check this, if you're really not having good luck on what's on the outside, is bring the Comcast box up here and connect your TV box up here or your Time Warner box or Charter box. Bring the box into this room, plug the box into this outlet and see if you get the box to work. You might have to drag a small TV up here, but that would be one way to figure out which cable's coming from the outside because if they're not marked, you're never going to know. Okay, well, thanks for watching this and good luck on your self-install. You can do it. I've done it many times. It's entirely within your possibilities. Have a great day.